and we're continuing practice problems with integrals here. The integral of 4 minus 3t cubed dt. Well instead of working out this binomial raised to a power of 3, and you could do that, you could multiply all this out and integrate term by term, but it's a little bit easier and faster to realize that this thing cubed, the integral will probably be this thing to the fourth or some multiple of that. So let's try this, 4 minus 3t to the fourth, and then if this were correct, we should be able to differentiate this and get that. And when we differentiate this, it would be 4 times 4 minus 3t cubed times the derivative of the inner function, which is negative 3. The derivative of that is negative 3. So you see this factor of negative 12 there. So we compensate that for that by putting a negative 1 over 12. And we put in the constant of integration. So that's our answer. In the next one, uh, we approach it in a similar fashion. 3x plus 4 to the negative fifth, well, the integral will probably be something like 3x plus 4 to the negative fourth. Okay, so let's try differentiating that and see if we get this. Well, 3x plus 4 to the negative fourth, the derivative of that would be negative 4 times 3x plus 4 to the negative fifth times 3 by the chain rule. So again, we have a factor of negative 12, which we need to clear out of here. Just put in a negative 1 over 12th, and put in your constant of integration, and that's your answer. Okay. Next one, integral of cosine to the fifth x times sine x dx. Well, watch this. If we make our answer cosine to the sixth x, when we differentiate this, remember this is a composite function. 6 is the outer function, and cosine is the inner function. So if we differentiate that, we get 6 cosine x times the derivative of cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Oh, that should be 6 cosine to the fifth. When we differentiate cosine to the sixth, we get 6 cosine x to the fifth times the derivative of the inner function, negative sine x. Now look at this, this is close to what we have here. We have a cosine to the fifth x times sine x, but we also have this negative six. So we get that out of there by putting in a negative one-sixth. So that's our answer. And we put the plus c, negative one-sixth cosine six x plus c. Okay. The integral of sine theta to the seventh times cosine theta d theta. Okay. Well, the integral of sine theta to the seventh is going to be something like sine theta to the eighth. So let's see what happens when we differentiate this. If we differentiate that, we get eight sine theta to the seventh times the derivative of sine theta which is cosine theta. And that's real close to what we have here. We're only off by a factor of 8, so we just put in a 1 eighth. And if we differentiated that, that would introduce this factor of 1 eighth over here, which would cancel out. So this is our answer, and put in your plus c. Okay, this next one looks a little bit intimidating, but it's really the same thing. Cosine to the fifth you can see if we differentiate the cosine, we will get the sine function or the negative sine function. So let's try cosine to the sixth. The integral here was cosine to the sixth of this pi x. All right, let's try differentiating that and see what we get. We get six cosine to the fifth pi x times the derivative of cosine of pi x, which is the derivative of cosine is negative sine pi x times the derivative of the inner function. I'm out of room here. I need to move that over a little bit. There we go. Times the derivative of the inner function times pi. So that's the chain rule with multiple links in the chain there. So is this what we have over here. 
Well, we've got a cosine to the fifth pi x and a sine pi x, but we have this extra factor of 6 and an extra factor of pi and a negative 1. So we need to put over here negative 1 over 6 pi, and that will do it. Now if we take the derivative of this, we get this, and then put in your plus c. Now down at the bottom, the integral of x squared minus 2x minus 7 dx, that's easy. These are, this is a, a polynomial with three terms, so we can just integrate term by term. So this will be the integral of x squared plus the integral of negative 2x plus the integral of negative 7. Or you could think of it as the integral of x squared minus the integral of 2x minus the integral of 7 dx. So let's do that. The integral of x squared is x cubed over 3 minus the integral of 2x, which is x squared, minus the integral of 7, which is 7x plus c. Okay. The integral of x to the negative 2 plus x squared dx. Again, we can do this term by term. This will be the integral of the first term plus the integral of the second term. Okay, the integral of x to the negative 2 is x to the negative 1. We just increase the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent plus the integral of x squared, which will be x cubed over 3. And let's rewrite this. Let's just write it as x cubed over 3 minus 1 over x, because that's what this is. This is a negative 1 over x, and put on the plus c. Okay, this next one's not too bad either. The integral of 3 cosecant squared x dx. You should remember that the cotangent function has as its derivative a negative cosecant squared. So the derivative of negative cotangent would be positive cosecant squared. And we have a factor of 3 which just sticks around here. So this is, this is not a chain rule, this is just a constant multiplier, so it stays. So this is 3 and then we need a negative cotangent. I'll put the negative out front. So we have the negative cotangent of x plus c and we're done. Just check this real quick. If we differentiate we get a negative 3 times the derivative of the cotangent function which is negative cosecant squared x and that's what we have here. The negative signs there will cancel out. And this one. The integral of tangent to the fifth x times secant squared x. Okay, well I know that the derivative of the tangent function is the secant squared function, so let's use that fact. Let's over here let's put the tangent tangent of x to the sixth. So tangent to the sixth x. And let's imagine differentiating this. If we differentiate that we would get six tangent x to the fifth times the derivative of the tangent function. And the derivative of the tangent function is secant squared x. And you can see that this is in fact this, except it's got a multiple of 6 in there. So if we put a 1 sixth here, that would introduce a 1 sixth in our derivative, and we would have the answer we're looking for. So this is the integral, and we need the constant of integration. Okay, one more. The integral of x cubed plus 4 squared dx. Hmm. Okay, this one's a little bit trickier if you try to do it with the method that we've been doing before. We can't just do a x cubed plus 4 cubed. We can't just take this thing and raise the power. But what we can do is expand this. This is only a power of 2. It's not that bad. We can probably do it in our heads. So let's rewrite this problem as the integral of this squared, and let's do the squaring. We'll do a FOIL. This is basically x cubed plus 4 times x cubed plus 4, which will be x to the 6th plus 8x cubed plus 16. And now, written this way, it's actually fairly easy to integrate term by term.
So let's integrate each of those. And this is going to be, let's see, the integral of x to the 6th will be x to the 7 over 7 plus the integral of 8x cubed will be 8x to the 4th over 4 plus the integral of 16 will be 16x. And then, of course, that middle term can simplify. So let's rewrite it as x to the 7th over 7 plus 2x to the 4th plus 16x plus c.